Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, um, my name is Mark Johnson. I'm the CEO of PwC, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here this evening, um, along with the Institute of Chartered Accountants and the Centre for Social Impact. As you know, we sponsor and have sponsored for some time the, the, the Transparency Awards, and we're really delighted to do that. Um, I'd like to first begin by paying my respects to the traditional custodians of the land that we are meeting on today. Uh, here in Sydney, I'm on, on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I hope I've pronounced that right. And I pay my respects to the uh, Gadigal elders, past, present and future. Um, for us, acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land is not something we've done at PwC historically. And this is part of the commitment that we've made in our first Reconciliation Action Plan, which was released in December 2010. So addressing our responsibility to the original occupants of Australia is something our people uh, are keen for us to do and which we propose to undertake in the same heartfelt way um, that we have engaged with the community in a broader context. So um, effective acknowledgement is just the beginning and I acknowledge that here, to, here this evening. Um, we're here to talk tonight about the Transparency Awards and I believe the requirement for transparency in reporting is as important in the not-for-profit sector as it is in the corporate sector. It is a crucial aspect of corporate responsibility to be open and honest about issues that are important to our people, the community, the environment and of course the marketplace. Indeed, as I look at the quality of entrance for these awards, I believe that in many ways the not-for-profit organisations are leading the way for the corporate world in telling their story and in being open and honest about their aims, their strategy, where they have succeeded and of course where you've failed as well. I think that's something the corporate world uh, doesn't do very easily as you well know. Um, transparent reporting is proving to be fundamental to all organisations. There's, there's never been greater demand for transparency. And of course, in the not-for-profit sector, it's terribly important to tell the right story to your stakeholders and the wider community. And it's moved beyond uh, being a, a PR exercise to an important part of the reporting process in a, an increasingly competitive sector, the third sector. There's clearly an important role for all of us to, to play in continuing this endeavour. And I'm heartened to see so many of you here tonight in support of these awards. It's a terrific turn up tonight and obviously shows how important you see the awards, which is, which is fantastic. Um, as you know, these awards were introduced in 2007 and they're now in their fourth year. And we are continuing to see significant improvements in the quality and transparency in reporting in the not-for-profit sector. And this is gratifying. It's exactly what the awards were intended to encourage. And I hope you agree that they have played their small part in doing exactly that. And I am proud of the contribution I believe the awards have made to the improvement in reporting in the not-for-profit sector as a whole. And I wait in anticipation of the announcement of tonight's awards. Now, without further ado on those few opening remarks, I'd like to introduce you to our MC for the evening, Rick Mellon, who many of you know. Um, as you know, Rick has been the partner in charge of our, uh, our, our foundation and he's been our leader of corporate responsibility for some years. Some of you may or may, may not know that Rick is actually retiring on the 30th of June and we'll be having a separate event to mark his time as leader uh, of our corporate responsibility initiatives and our foundation. He has been absolutely wonderful. We see corporate responsibility as a key part of who we are. We believe in a better world. We believe we have a responsibility to contribute broadly to the community. We believe that you can't succeed in business in a failed world, and we deeply believe that. Rick has led with great distinction our focus in that particular area. Mark Redding is here, who will be taking over from Rick on the 1st of July, and Hopefully you'll meet him tonight and get a chance to meet him again um, uh, in, in a little while as well, maybe at an, an event for Rick in, in a month or two's time. But I didn't want to lose this opportunity to acknowledge Rick as I hand the uh, microphone to him to be our MC for this evening. So please join me in thanking Rick and welcoming him to the stage. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Mark. That altogether wasn't scripted, so I'll have to be more careful with you on future occasions. Um, listen, I'd, I'd like to add my welcome to everybody here. I mean, what a fantastic turnout. This is definitely, in the four years um, we've been running these Transparency Awards, this is definitely a record crowd. Um, I, I, I think that, uh, well, I hope um, that this may be actually is, is representative of the fact that the issue of quality and transparency in reporting is actually an idea whose, whose, idea has tru uh, whose time has truly come um, in the not-for-profit sector. Um, you know, I like to think that's supported not only by everybody here, and I acknowledge there is a free feed and some drinks here too, which might have encouraged a few of you to be here, uh, but also from the increased number of entrants and the really 
um, ever a, a improving quality of those entrants that we see um, year on year and this year in particular. So I'm going to kick straight into it because we have got quite a lot to, to get through um, tonight. One of the reasons for that is that, as most of you will be aware, we've expanded the awards this year. So we now have a number of, of different categories. Previously, we've just had one category. Um, which was all organizations with revenue of at least $10 million. This year, we've got three categories. One is um, organizations with revenue 5 to $20 million. Um, The next is organizations revenue above $20 million. And, and finally, we've introduced a most improved award. And primary, primary drivers for us doing that was we wanted um, both to, uh, to allow smaller organizations to be able to to enter the awards, which obviously with a $10 million bottom level, um, they weren't previously able to do. But also to, to some extent at least to level out the playing field a bit so that organizations with, with access to a similar level of resources were competing with each other rather than having an $11 million turnover organization competing with a, with a $200 million organization. Uh, and, and obviously we wanted to have a most improved award I guess to give the opportunity to encourage um, some organizations that have made great strides um, but perhaps hadn't quite reached the pinnacle of reporting yet. Um, another new initiative this year which we're introducing um, is that we have uh, some coverage of the award ceremony on social media. So uh, right now there's a live video streaming happening through PwC's Facebook page as I speak. So there's the camera at the back. And, you know, hello to all my Facebook friends out there. Um, and as you will be able to see from time to time, including right now, um, we, have a, we have a Twitter um, piece going under the hashtag of PwC Transparency. Um, and we will be tweeting ourselves onto this from this very room during the course of uh, the evening. So please feel free, any of you who are more technologically savvy than me, to join the conversation during the evening. Um, I'd like now to introduce Rupert Meyer, um, one of the jury members, to present the jury report on this year's awards. I think most of you in this room would be familiar with Rupert, uh, but very briefly, he's chairman of the Meyer Family Company Limited and a director of the publicly listed Meyer Holding Limited, Amsil Limited, and DUI Limited. He's chairman of the National Gallery of Australia and the Caldor Pacific Arts Project, a board member of the Felton Bequest Committee, a director of Jawan Indigenous Corporate Partnerships, and a director of the Maya Foundations. In other words, a very busy man. Rupert, over to you. Well, uh, thank you, Rick, and thank you, Mark, and uh, good evening, ladies uh, and gentlemen. Um, I've been given the task this evening of um, presenting the jury report on the 2010 P. WC Transparency Awards. This has been a, a very pleasurable task, certainly not a, not a chore. And I say that because it's really given us the opportunity to present what is an, the overriding message of the, of the evening, and that is that transparency in the not-for-profit sector is in good shape. Um, firstly, let me thank my fellow jurors. Um, their insights and wisdom and experience helped me better understand the issues, and the, the sense of a team effort also made it a very enjoyable experience. Uh, Deborah Seifert, the CEO of Philanthropy Australia, who's, who's here. Um, Simon Miller, Governance and Accountability Advisor, World Vision Australia. Uh, and of course, World Vision were the winners of the 2009 Transparency Awards. And David Crombie, CEO of Community Council for Australia and a member of the not-for-profit um, re uh, sector Reform Council. My thanks also go to PwC for inviting me to participate. And although he wasn't part of the process, I would like to make a personal acknowledgement tonight of David Clark, who died last week, and whose efforts for the not-for-profit sector are absolutely legendary. I think all of us involved in the not-for-profit sector, in one way or another, owe PwC a vote of thanks for their ongoing support of these awards. They uh, really are a fantastic initiative, and uh, the support here tonight suggests that that's a view that's shared by by many. So could we congratulate PwC? We on the jury uh, hope that the considered judgments and practical recommendations in the report, which will be available, will ensure that useful feedback is given not just to this year's contestants, but would be of value to future participants and importantly to the not-for-profit sector generally. Before I present our findings, I would like to make a couple of general comments. 
In reflecting upon the merits of the reporting, both annual reports and websites that came before the jury, some time was spent reflecting upon a couple of questions. For whom are these reports and sites prepared? What is their purpose? Who reads them? How well does the information provided engage and inform its intended reader? Thinking this way about the reporting, the jury noted how organisations operating under the not-for-profit sector umbrella have many constituencies and stakeholders for whom transparency is a fundamental element of the relationship. Transparency is hugely important. Most external stakeholders, such as government and regulatory agencies, foundations and other funding bodies, have their own suite of accountabilities. Accordingly, their trust and confidence in not-for-profit organisations and their willingness to take risks with an organisation can be enhanced by clear evidence of transparency. Clients, too, many of whom are vulnerable and may have experienced disappointment in previous encounters with not-for-profits, are probably more likely to feel comfortable in placing their trust in an organisation that is open and transparent in its operations. Such public openness can also only enhance the organisation's standing with the media and other commentators, making clear an organisation's central purpose and accountability. Sometimes there are uncomfortable aspects of an organisation's performance that require disclosure. It is just as important that these aspects be made transparent for others to judge within the context of an organisation's overall achievements. My observation is that internal stakeholders, such as staff and professionals engaged on projects, are more likely to be attracted to and stay with an organisation whose aims and operating processes and financial position is clear and open. The value of well-designed, transparent annual reports to the staff of a not-for-profit should not be underestimated. While few staff may ever read the document from cover to cover, its existence is both a record of their achievements and a singular statement of the raison d'etre of the organisation, which can be a source of strength when difficult environments and circumstances threaten to undermine the passion and commitment needed to carry on. They also help staff communicate the aims and achievements of an organisation to the wider community. In these times of rapid changes and high staff mobility, these reports are also the corporate memory that is often no longer available in an organisation's people. They are worth doing and worth doing very well with transparency, the key measure of their utility. Let me now turn to the jury report findings. Our jury report contains our observations on general trends and reporting issues across the not-for-profit sector. Our comments incorporate insights gained during the detailed review process conducted by PwC's subject matter experts, the judging panel, and the final review by the jury. We got the easy bit, actually. Uh, we are pleased to report a further significant improvement in the standards of reporting by those who have nominated for the Transparency Awards compared to the prior year. I actually saw what I'm about to read on a tweet, so it's already gone live. That's good. The, this year, uh, this year entrance, uh, the number of entrants increased to 45 from 39 in 2009. Since the inception of the awards in 2007, there have been 164 submissions with approximately 79% re-entering the awards in 2010. We are pleased to report that average scores achieved by organisations who entered in both 2009 and 2010 have increased from 56% in 2009 to 62% in 2010, and the average score for the top 10 entrants in the awards in 2009 was 65%, and in 2010 is 75 per cent. These statistics highlight that organisations submitting to the awards are truly committed to improving the quality and transparency of their reporting and indicate that the feedback provided as part of the awards process is actually assisting in this. And that's part of the big idea of the awards and the way in which uh, evenings like this is conducted and the whole purpose of the social media to get the message out to a much broader audience. Disclosure requirements for charities and other not-for-profit organisations currently depend on the legal form of incorporation and the associated reporting requirements, and those reporting requirements specific to raising funds from the public. There is no single regulatory regime for not-for-profits in Australia, and perhaps as a consequence, the quality of reporting in the sector is highly variable. 
and I know there have been discussions in the room tonight and in many other forums about you know, perhaps now the need for a charities commission in Australia to bundle together uh, 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 the reporting requirements to get some standardization across the sector, both uh, from the grant-seeking community as well as the grant-making community. Until such time as there is a single reporting regime, reporting in the not-for-profit sector will continue to be impacted by a lack of comparability and minimum reporting requirements. The comments that follow seek to highlight areas of strength and improvement and also draw attention to those areas that fall short of best practice transparent reporting. Consistent with prior, the prior year, we commend participants on the high standard of presentation of external stakeholder information. Annual reports, websites and other resource material continue to be unique and representative of the vision and values of each organisation. One of the jury members described the standards of the finalists as being above Mount Everest, which reflects the achievements of these documents and reports. We note that while it is important to portray a strong image and sometimes branding throughout, organisations are encouraged to be aware of the risk of reducing the value of the information if overdone in design and layout. Stakeholder information needs to be presented in a form appropriate for the reader and should include sufficient detail and enable ease of readability. Consistent with the prior year, organisations reported on their mission, vision and purpose effectively throughout the varied sources of publicly available information. We note a trend of organisations building strategic plans for future periods or expressing their intention to do so. In doing so, uh, we encourage organisations to present clear, measurable goals, how specifically the goals will be measured, and each year present progress against these goals within the strategic time frame. Overall, the majority of organisations provided a good standard of reporting on their operations and the measurement of what was performed and how it was resourced. However, organisations could demonstrate greater transparency if they, were, if they were to include more information about the social impact that they are making as a whole, and I'll say something more about that shortly. Reporting on financial performance was disclosed by organisations through the inclusion of full or summarised financial statements, separate financial reports, statistical graphs, we love graphs, and executive commentary. We noted an overall improvement in the effectiveness of tables and graphs in the current year, highlighting movements in key balances and trends over the years. Explanatory narrative to support and further explain these key movements was often minimal or excluded. We recommend narrative be included and improved to enhance transparency. Disclosure of the sustainability of the different types of funding received by organisations was often brief or excluded. This reporting is important for stakeholders as it explains how the organisation plans to fund its future goals and aspirations. Overall, we encourage greater disclosure of the analysis of key movements, including the reasons for movements, factors affecting key drivers and action going forward. It's important for stakeholders to understand the financial implications of key events that have both favourably or adversely affected the organisation throughout the year and how management aims to address these. To be blunt, transparency comes from spelling it out rather than hoping it won't be discovered. And in spelling it out, whatever the it is, give very clear explanations. Truly transparent reporting involves reporting on all facets of the operations and includes balanced disclosure of both positive and negative impacts and performance. Of critical importance to stakeholders is the ability of an organisation to identify and disclose areas of potential weakness and risk and how management plan to address and mitigate the impact of these weaknesses and risks. Organisations were generally proficient in the presentation and explanation of positive performance and results. However, detail and analysis of poor or unfavourable performance were often lacking or avoided altogether. See my comment above. Uh, I'm reminded of comments made by one of my colleagues and, and cousins at the Meyer Foundation, Simon Hurd, at a grants management conference earlier this year. In a section of his presentation, somewhat colourfully titled, Manure Happens, uh, uh, Manure Happens, Put It to Use, uh, was the title. He said, we can learn as much or more from the things that didn't work out. We have all known projects 
where we invested money and hope and good intentions and at the end found that there were barriers to success we hadn't anticipated. How many grant makers are prepared to let the world in on our learning experiences from grants that have failed? That's what real transparency means and that's why it's so difficult. It's difficult to get your grantees to admit to any elements that weren't ideal because they're afraid that they won't get funded next time. It's difficult for the grant makers to experiment to see what works and what doesn't when there's pressure to present an absolutely unblemished image. We reiterate the importance of organisations communicating the uncomfortable, the bad news, as well as the good news, and demonstrating their ability to apply learnings to future challenges. This includes utilising management and controls to identify and appropriately address one-off or recurring issues. Greater disclosure in this area increases stakeholder confidence in management's ability to utilise funds in an appropriate and effective manner. Organisations should continue to challenge themselves to balance both messages of purpose and methodology to increase the transparency of their reporting. Consideration as to who the relevant stakeholder groups are and their information needs forms the basis of this. Balance between clarity and conciseness presents challenges for all organisations to varying degrees, but we noted some of the larger, more complex organisations have done this extremely well this year. Overall, the majority of organisations in the awards communicated inputs to their organisations' activities and the resultant outputs. As a collective jury, we feel the not-for-profit sector needs to focus on balancing this with reporting on goals and results regarding the fundamental social impact of the organisation in the communities in which they are operating and work to benefit. A report needs to be more than a document prepared for acquittal purposes. It is more than this is how we were funded, this is how the funds were expended, this was the outcome we achieved. If the organisation's purpose, for example, is to reduce youth homelessness or improve school retention rates or find new cures for diseases or improve quality of life for sufferers, the report is the means by which to communicate how the big mission is going as well as to report on the many contributing factors along the way. Do we know how the organisations work has changed the macro situation. Not-for-profit organisations need to address, measure and report on the social impact on the communities in which they operate. Broader goals of an organisation often gets, get translated into programs and services governed by funding contracts. In implementation, the original social impact goal can be obscured, but it is the social impact that truly matters and will create the change organisations in the not-for-profit sector that they, a, uh, that they aim to achieve. The jury believes this is the next challenge for the sector to step above input-output reporting and truly articulate and demonstrate what the overall social impact of the organisation is. I said at the outset that, in my view, and I believe uh, that it's the view of my fellow jurors, that we have seen great strides in the degree of transparency in the report submitted in this latest round. Since my last involvement in these awards in 2007, I've seen a much greater focus on transparency throughout the not-for-profit sector and philanthropic sectors, and in particular, the need for a willingness to speak about failure, not just success, and how important a learning tool this is. Simon Hurd's presentation that I mentioned earlier was about the need for grant making to grow up. I think transparency is a sign of the maturity uh, that the, the whole sector uh, has uh, begun to show in this regard over the, past, uh, over the past four presentations. So thank you to the participants in the 2010 awards. May I encourage your ongoing participation in future years and I also encourage you to encourage others to participate in the awards in future years. Uh, we all benefit uh, from having a very large uh, a group of, uh, of entrants even if it means the judges have more work to do. Um, I have been asked to let you know that the full jury report will actually be available by the end of the week on the PwC Transparency Awards website, along with the best practice examples from this year's awards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rupert. Um, as Rupert mentioned, he was one of our... <coughs> jurors in the inaugural year of these awards, uh, but was 
unfortunately unable to continue the following year um, because he wasn't available at the appropriate time. Um, but you will now, I think, understand why we're so keen to get him back. Uh, and I'm clear, clear to see that good things are worth waiting for. So we're very pleased to have you back. Um, I should have mentioned earlier that along with the, uh, the magnificent trophies we have here, which I hope someone's going to unwrap because they still seem to be in shrink wrap at the moment, um, <clears throat> just in time delivery. Um, as, along with that, for the, for the winners of the awards, um, for the revenue category awards, there will be um, funding of $20,000 for the winners and $10,000 for the runner-up to be used for development and training. Um, of, the, of the people within those organizations. I'd love to extend that offer to the winner of the most improved award, but unfortunately the budget ran out and I didn't manage to get to my CEO quickly enough to, uh, to be able to cover that as well. Um, <clears throat> having given that introduction, it now falls on me to introduce the first of this evening's awards, um, which is the Paul Carter Most Improved Award. Um, this new award recognizes the participant showing the most significant improvement in quality and transparency of reporting from their prior year submission. We've named this award in memory of Paul Carter, a PwC partner and close personal friend who sadly died of a heart attack only two months ago at a tender young age of 52. Paul worked in the firm's risk and quality area and was a strong and very generous supporter of our foundation. The expression continuous improvement could have been coined with Paul in mind. He was a highly creative thinker a problem solver, and a restless innovator who improved everything he touched. I can't think of a better name for the award to bear, and we're honored today by the presence of Paul's wife, Lee, and two children, Nathan and Anna, and I'd ask them to step forward for the presentation of the award. The two finalists for the Paul Carter Most Improved Award are the Salvation Army Southern Territory and Plan International Australia. I commend both organizations on achieving dramatic improvements in the quality and transparency of their reporting. But there can be only one winner, and that winner is Plan International Australia. <laughs> Founded over 70 years ago, Plan is one of the oldest and largest children's development organizations in the world. Plan works in 49 developing countries across Africa, Asia, and the Americas to promote child rights and lift millions of children out of poverty. PLAN works with more than 3.5 million families in their communities each year. PLAN achieved an impressive level of improvement compared to the prior year. Their raw score assessment improved from 49% to 74%, a huge move in just one year. In particular, strong improvements were achieved in communicating PLAN's strategic goals, development of their strategic plan and performance. There's also much improved disclosure in relation to both employees and volunteers, and in relation to fundraising costs and plans investment policy. Um, Claire Hatton is a director of plan, and I'd like her to, uh, well, we will now present her with the award, and then I'll give Claire the chance to say a few words. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Um, we're absolutely thrilled to receive this award at Plan International Australia. Um, and our vastly improved report is actually absolutely no accident um, and it's not simply the initiative of one person. Um, this actually came about as a direct result of the board making a very important decision in 2008. And that decision was uh, that accountability and transparency was a very, very important enabler for our current three-year strategy, which is about to end, actually. Um, we identified that the increasing expectations um, of accountability and transparency of our stakeholders um, was a, a, a very, very important part of plans growth um, and plans future. Um, and therefore, we really set about making m massive improvements to our communications process. So uh, consequently, um, we took our annual report and um, we spent a lot of time looking at the new benchmarks um, and looking at the feedback um, that the PwC Awards gave us the year before in, in order to make sure that we made really serious improvements. Our senior communications officer, Charlotte Strong, conducted extensive research across all of our stakeholders um, and prepared a very detailed plan in order to um, increase the accountability and transparency of the report. This led uh, to a significantly different report. Uh, I don't think you can go from um, where we were uh, in 2009 to where we are today. 
uh, without it being completely different. So we're absolutely delighted with the recognition um, that the new report has received. Um, and we really do believe that the feedback that we get this year will also help us improve next year. So we're very much looking forward to contending for uh, winning the, the big prize next year. So watch out for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire, and what a great story that is, uh, both in terms of an organization really realizing um, the power of, uh, of greater transparency, but, but I guess from our point of view as being part of the awards, to see the awards helping to drive that come through. Um, I'd now like to invite Peter Shergold, uh, the CEO of the Centre for Social Impact, to come to the stage to announce the winner of the category, revenue category between $5 million and $20 million. Peter. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mark, first of all, for your hospitality this evening. And I am delighted that as part of PwC's reconciliation plan, uh, you do start by recognizing the uh, custodians of this land. For me, it gives a perspective to what we do tonight. You were quite right. The Gadigal clan were the people who lived on Sydney Cove. They were part of the Darak language group, which stretched down to the St. George's River in the south, to the Nepean in the west, the Hawkesbury in the north. Eora, the Eora nation, Eora is actually the word they used for people, and specifically for Aboriginal people. The, uh, the white convict and colonial settlers were something else again. Um, and why it gives perspective, if you think we feel pretty pleased now, we've come to the fourth year here that we've had our um, society here for two and a quarter centuries. The recent archaeology suggests that the Darak people and the Gadigal clan have been living here for something like 300 centuries. And it just gives a perspective on what we do. On behalf of CSI, I'm delighted for this opportunity to participate on on behalf of Les Hems and Patrick McClure, who are also here on behalf of CSI. And in a few moments, if I can beat the tweet, I'm going to announce the shortlisted organizations and the runner-up and the winner in the small organization category. I think this is the fourth time the awards have been held here in Australia, and CSI has partnered in the last three with PwC and the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Australia. I'd have to say that PwC is an organization that has taken a lead in role modeling corporate responsibility and accountability, focusing on making available the skills of the organization and the commitment of its people. And CSI is delighted to receive support from and work with PwC. And I do want on this occasion to say that over the last three years, what a delight it has been to work so closely with Rick Millen. So thank you, Rick. I also want to say that the Institute has played a major role in providing advice to and advocating on behalf of not-for-profit organizations. And I'm personally delighted to contribute a foreword to the updated report that they intend to launch this evening. For CSI, improving the risk strategy and the governance arrangements and the financial management of not-for-profit organizations is a key part of our mission. And so too is the focus on openness, honesty, accountability, and clarity in reporting to and communicating with stakeholders. Public trust and confidence, which is so crucial to philanthropy and social investment, depends upon it. And of course, this is a particular challenge for the smaller, less resourced organizations, which find it harder to direct effort from doing things to evaluating and reporting on what they do. And yet, if these organizations are to attract capital, are to scale up, are to become sustainable in pursuing their mission, transparency in their annual reports is crucial. So I pay tribute to all those smaller but ambitious organizations which accepted the challenge and commend 
all the shortlisted organizations please appear. There! <laughs> Gosh, like magic! Uh, makes these organizations stand out is a commitment to integrity, a willingness to walk the talk in public, a readiness to acknowledge areas of weakness, and a desire continuously to improve organizational capability. And so, without further ado, to this category's runner-up this evening. Next slide. So congratulations, congratulations to an organization which does so much to transform the lives of those who live in poverty, providing microfinance and support services to small businesses. And that is Opportunity International. And I'd ask Robert Dunn, the CEO, to come up and to receive the award. I just want to say a, uh, a few words from the judge's report on Opportunity International. It was pointed out that not just the report but the website were extraordinarily informative. They gave a great feel for the work undertaken by the organisation. The publications have an effective combination of personal stories and organisational level narrative as to what is being achieved. The organised reporting is well-weighted in emphasis across the seven areas assessed for the Transparency Awards. I think that's a great wrap. And Robert, congratulations. And now, um, imagining a drum roll, trumpet voluntary, the Rick Millen all-star dancing team, now to our winner uh, in this uh, category. It's a remarkable children's family cancer charity with camps and programs across Australia. The winner is Camp Quality. I'd ask Simon Roundtree, the CEO, to come and accept the award. Let me just say a little bit of what the judges said about Camp Quality's annual report, which was found extremely impressive in all aspects. It's a most useful document for stakeholders and staff alike. The design and articulation of strategies and the efforts made to describe and measure outputs and impacts are commendable. The website, too, is a useful resource for parents and carers seeking information about the organisation and its programmes. So, Simon, well done indeed. Um, firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge all the organisations in the room. Um, really, congratulations on who you are and what you do. Uh, it's pretty amazing when you think individually and collectively the societies and communities that we work in and the difference that we make is really quite substantial. So I, I absolutely believe that you deserve all the accolades and congratulations that should come your way. Um, secondly, I'd like to thank my team for their passion and their commitment. They absolutely inspire me and in particular our marketing manager, Lee Jury, and her team, who, for their creativity and their inspiration, created the annual report that won us the award. So thanks very much, guys. Um, thirdly, um, thanks to PwC. Um, it was a bold effort uh, four years ago to take this step to create these awards. And it was also a bold effort for them to actually listen to the not-for-profit sector and take on board the advice that we give them. And there's not many corporates that do that, so congratulations to PwC in that regard. And lastly, I'd just like to thank our kids and our families who, despite facing cancer and great, great adversity in their lives, they allow us to have fun. 
which is one of the great lessons of life. So thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to the large end of town. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, Graham Meyer, uh, the CEO of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Australia, um, to come to the stage. I think first Graham is going to launch a new institute publication, as, as Peter referred to, aimed at assisting the not-for-profit sector. And then what we've all been waiting for, he'll announce the winner of the uh, over $20 million award. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a real pleasure to be here tonight, as I've been here for the last four years, being uh, an inaugural partner with PwC in these Transparency Awards. And certainly from an institute perspective, we believe that the not-for-profit sector and the, the reporting and all of what uh, has been talked about tonight is fundamental and integral to the whole setup of not only the not-for-profit sector, but the trust and respect of people within it. So we are very proud as an institute to be involved in these awards. And from our perspective, the not-for-profit sector is, in many senses, the glue that holds our society together. Without the not-for-profit sector, the whole of our community would be at a great loss. And as the sector continues to grow and the governance and the operating environment evolve, the Institute will continue to be a collective voice around the advocacy of the not-for-profit sector. Representing chartered accountants, we can be of service to not-for-profits in an ongoing source of advice, and especially on the complexity of financial reporting and management. And there is no doubt that every year the complexities of financial reporting and financial management will continue to grow as government, as regulators, as the community in general, requires higher and higher standards. And it's through these PwC Transparency Awards and the process that goes around these awards that has really generated significant learnings for not only us, but as we've heard, for some of the participants. And so I'm really delighted that tonight we do launch this new book entitled Enhancing Not-for-Profit Annual and Financial Reporting. It's an extension of what we've produced over the last few years. But I've got to say, when you read through it, and I have read through it, I'm, I'm pleased to say, and I was really quite impressed and amazed, and I tried to put myself in, in the position of a CEO of a not-for-profit or a director of a not-for-profit, and was trying to understand just how simple is this book in helping me and my team get through this whole annual reporting and financial reporting process. I've got to say, it's pretty simple. Even the questions in the checklist were intelligible. And I'd, and I'd like to... Sometimes accounting stuff is not intelligible. And let me tell you that because I'm a lawyer trying to learn this accounting stuff, and it's not easy. But I'd also like to thank the co-author, Stuart Leslie, who's here with us tonight. Uh, Stuart has been working with the Institute for many years, um, particularly in developing this resource. But it's interesting that it started about 10 years ago when Stuart and a, a group of his fellow chartered accountants in Melbourne started to think about the issues facing the reporting prospects for not-for-profits. And so I think it's with a great deal of pride that the Institute recognises tonight Stuart and the impact that he and his team have had in making sure that we get this delivered and certainly get it delivered in a readable form that's also understandable. So there is a strong commitment and will continue to be a strong commitment uh, to the openness and accountability in annual reports and this will be reflected in our collaboration um, with PwC and the Centre for Social Impact. And Rick, it is really sad to hear that you're leaving, that you're retiring, but I understand that having just become eligible for a seniors card. But, although as my technical staff pointed out to me very quickly, you might be eligible, Graham, but you can't apply because you have too many hours work. I love a technical accountant, but it's good to keep me ethical and honest. And so to tonight's awards presentation, um, I'd like to present the award for organisations with revenue greater than 20 million. And so in the top 10 category, point to slide, it says, um, we see a range of organisations. What's quite fantastic is some of them we've seen before but there are new organisations here for the first time. 
And it's always great to see new organisations making that effort to get an award. But it's also great to see those that didn't quite make it the previous year or in previous years have another go and try and improve. And so let me now turn to the runner-up in the, the over 20 million category. And I'm delighted to say that the runner-up is Oxfam Australia. The judges and the jury found that Oxfam retained its extremely high standard of reporting and described its annual report as an inspiring document. I reckon that's quite an achievement when people look at a document and say, and particularly an annual report, that's inspiring. And why? Because it not only demonstrates how much Oxfam is achieving, but it gives a really good indication of how it is achieving its objectives. They were also impressed with Oxfam's openness. The organisation didn't shy away from addressing those hard issues. And so, ladies and gentlemen, um, please congratulate Andrew and his team. And now, of course, for the big one, for the over 20 million in revenue, tonight's winner. Tonight's winner is Mission Australia. And I'd like to invite Toby Hall to come up to the stage. Do join us, Toby. This large organisation is described as increasingly complex and diverse which makes, of course, reporting all the more challenging. Mission Australia is one of Australia's leading community service organisations and their continued efforts to improve have paid off. Mission Australia operates more than 550 community and employment services from 350 sites in metropolitan, rural and regional Australia. Both the judges and the jury were highly impressed with how well Mission Australia tells the whole story in its annual report and does so in a way that's within a reasonable word limit, but also at the same time has maintained a very, very high level of transparency and readability. It provides a wealth of information about its various services and these are interspersed with personal stories and that is really what gives it a human face to that data and statistics. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the winner of the over 20 million PwC Transparency Awards, the Mission Australia and Toby Hall. Well, thanks very much for that. Congratulations to everyone who entered this year and took part in the awards. I'd like to thank Mark from PwC and Rick as well. Uh, it'll be sad to see Rick go for me. I've enjoyed working with him. He's, he's quite fun to work with, is Rick. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be a sad day when he moves on, but I'm sure the new person will be great as well. But Rick, for your contribution to this, but to the sector as a whole, I'd like to thank you because it's been outstanding and you've led PwC in this arena, and I'd like to thank you for that. Peter, CSI, Graham from the Institute, thank you for putting these awards together. Uh, a bit like plan, these things don't happen by accident. And so Tim, who's our CFO, three years ago, I, I only really gave him one KPI. Uh, that was to win the Transparency Awards. So he's done it. So well, well done to Tim, but also to Emma and Manisha here tonight who helped lead the organisation through this because it's not a one-person effort, it's an organisation effort. And congratulations to you guys on the work you've done to win this. Probably about two months ago, I got a phone call from a journalist, uh, as you do, and they uh, wanted to have a chat about the regulatory reform of our sector. And I said, yeah, I know a little bit about that, so happy to talk about it. And uh, 
Bill Shorten had just put a report out on regulatory reform, and you know, at Mission we actually think it was a good idea having the regulatory reform support that, generally speaking. And so she sort of said, you're into supporting this reform then, are you? And I sort of said yes, and 